Next up, from Western Springs College, we've got Year 12 student, Juliet Frata. Hello, thank you so much for having me. All right, what makes a good leader? Strength, intelligence, honesty. Atop Forbes' list of essential qualities that define great leadership lie integrity, communication, and confidence. And we can see these traits in leaders worldwide. One significant recent example is the many female leaders that have been praised for their leadership of the pandemic. We don't have to look far to find examples. Our own Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, Angela Merkel of Germany, and Tsai Ing-wen of Taiwan have each supported their countries to significantly lower case and death tolls. Their success has helped the world to understand that it's really important to have good female leaders. Female leaders can bring in new perspectives and skills, as well as representing women's ideas in their decision-making. In short, women can be great leaders. And yet, there's a very visible pattern of a lack of women in global leadership roles. Of the 195 independent countries, only 21 have women as the current head of state, with 119 never having had a woman leader. As well as this, a mere 8% of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies are female, and specifically in New Zealand, women only make up 38% of our parliament. And get this, of the 184 companies in the New Zealand Stock Exchange, there are fewer companies led by women than all women than guys named Mark. What? How have we reached this absurd level of inequality within our leadership? Pretty much, it reflects the societies that elect these leaders. One survey showed that 41% of Germans said that they wouldn't, that they would feel com that only 41% of Germans said they would feel comfortable with a female head of state, even though the Angela Merkel has been their leader for 15 years. And when you start looking for it, you can see the dismissal of strong women everywhere, not just in leadership roles, but in everyday life, within companies, families, pop culture, social media, film, music, literature, everywhere. But why are female leaders so much less desired? Their lack of appeal is rooted in misogyny. Western society has pre-existing ideas of how men and women should act. These ideas are even more fixed for indigenous women and women of color. Stereotypical masculine traits include assertiveness and strength, while typical feminine traits are sensitivity and cooperation. And you can see these stereotypes reinforced from a really young age. Four separate studies done by universities in the US show that by the age of just six, young girls are significantly less likely to endorse their own gender as being really, really smart, saving this compliment for males. There's a conflict. We expect our leaders to be strong and assertive, but since birth, we've been told that women should be weak and submissive. Our ideas of what it means to be a woman don't align with our ideas of what it means to be a leader. And this leads to an overall preference for male leadership. And when a woman does go against these stereotypes, she's often ridiculed for her actions. A 2010 study shows that women receive 2.5 times the amount of feedback men do about aggressive communication styles, being the target of, uh, being the target of phrases such as, your speaking style is off-putting. Powerful women go against typical ideals of femininity. People dislike strong women. But these ideas, they, take, they teach girls and women that they are not good enough to lead. And it creates the belief that someone else will lead. This is so harmful. These ideas threaten the progression of our societies. The world needs strong women. If I may, the greatest threat to our planet is the idea that someone else will save it, that someone else will lead. There are so many strong, intelligent women out there with the ability to be able to contribute ideas to the global stage. Antiquated gender roles, barring women from entering leadership positions, pose a significant threat to the welfare of New Zealand and the planet. And so I urge women and girls to push for leadership roles. We can lead and we can make positive changes. And for everyone, 
it's pivotal that we redefine what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a man, but most importantly, what it means to be a leader. So once again, I ask you to reconsider your assumptions. Who does make a good leader? Thank you. Kia ora, Juliet really reinforces how good it is to be in a Zoom gallery of wahine leaders and wahine rangatahi leaders at that.